Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are outside because finally it's good weather here in Denmark. We have been waiting for that and it has kept us waiting. So um, what have I been up to? Well I've been playing around with different stuff all over the place. So uh, down here we can kind of see the, the garden here that the grass is nicely cut because I have gotten the robot up and running again. Over here we have the robot management station where um, all the robot operations are being controlled and um, yeah, it's a very tough job but well I manage it and um, over here the robot is resting. It, uh, it cut the grass for a few hours today and then it uh, decided that it was out of power. It's in there. Um, I have done some fixing on it. It had quite a few issues this year, uh, other than it's dirty. Um, it ran for a little bit when it came out. I have had it inside the house all winter. But then the charging station stopped working. Right now you can see that this LED is lighting up red down here. And actually the LED was broken. One of the legs in the LEDs had been eaten up by rust and that was a difficult error to find. So uh, it wouldn't charge and it wouldn't run and it was all weird and I took it apart and the charging station was full of ants and moist. So I cleaned that up and then uh, I fixed some rusted connections and that didn't help any and I thought that the cable running around in the garden would be the issue but that wasn't it and yeah finally I found that LED that was uh, broken rusted up so I sat out here with my little Ryopi uh, soldering iron and replaced that LED. The LED that I put in there is not nearly as good as the one that was in there to start with but it does the job. I can see that it's lighting up red and I can also barely see that it's lighting up green when when it's not charging. The robot is charging right now it's uh, 60, 68% charged. So. Um, if you're new here, the robot runs off solar power. It runs off this panel over here. The rest of the panels up there are uh, for the house. They look like this from the from the view of the neighbor. So uh, yeah, I have 12 panels up here, and um, I'm I'm moving them. That is well, I, I washed them off today. They were really dirty and some bird has been pooping all over them but I want to move them so let's see where to I, uh, I also washed my car that's uh, the first time this year and I did some window washing the ones that uh, <laughs> is downstairs so yeah okay the sun is right behind can we have it behind the chimney that would be smart ah, kind of okay I can't see anything but, uh, Maybe there, yeah. Um, I wanna move the solar panels up on this roof up here. It's not pointing in the right direction. It's not south. Well, it's actually pointing east, but it's uh, it's better than over here because over here, they're in the shadow of the neighbor's building much of the time. Up there, it's not gonna be in the shadow of anything. It's just not gonna be optimal. So I have started putting in fasteners you can see them there that the one closest to ours is um, is ever so slightly not straight but it had to go in like that to uh, otherwise it wouldn't hit the wood and also i put them in on the other side i need to put in all the ones in between um i'm gonna be putting in the solar cell uh, mounting system. I bought these last year and I didn't get them mounted last year. So now I'm working to do it this year. And there is like uh, six, six of these. So the thought is that each of these will go from one end and as far as they can go. And then the last two, uh, I'm gonna cut them up. And I'm not sure I might have to go get one more but yeah um, they are ever so slightly longer those two I've 
there is a price difference. These were pretty cheap. And then if you wanted a little bit longer, well, they were, they were unreasonable more expensive so um, I tried it to do it that way so yeah I'm gonna be um, be mounting those on my roof it's really scary to sit up there on the roof and drill holes into the roof um, I don't I don't like that idea at all but uh, yeah I gotta get it done I didn't film any of it because it was um, it felt ever so slightly dangerous and there is a lot of safety police on YouTube so you don't get to see that part <laughs> So, yeah, um, water is dripping down here. That's because up here I have the solar collectors for collecting um, solar for hot water. And I've been washing those off and, uh, and, uh, and the roof up there. So um, water is still dripping down there. And the solar panels are gonna be powering this. Oh, it has become dirty. This uh, heat pump here. Uh, the idea with this heat pump is that it's gonna be running in spring and in autumn and it's gonna shorten the period of time where I need to burn wood to heat up the house so the idea is that it's gonna run off solar power this is a 230 volt system uh, where this is a 400 volt system and to get that one to run off solar power I need a big inverter and yeah it becomes dangerous when you're messing with 400 volts 230 volts feels a lot less dangerous and the systems needed to power that is also a lot less expensive also we need some batteries to do this i have really been out investing uh, these are rechargeable lithium ion batteries and this is the pylon 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 branded well these were very expensive luckily i have a rich uncle in uh, in the united states in texas my uncle joe um and uh, i was doing a video on batteries and well he just coughed up the cash um this is one of them i'm gonna do a separate video on them but i thought that i will give you a sneak peek so um, there they are alike the, the box here and the box down there it's the same thing but uh, they come with different cables so this one up here comes with cables to connect it to the charge controller which are these uh, and there's a red ish and a black ish and they're pretty long and then they have an eye i don't know if i'm going to be able to use that and then they come with some more or less it's a network cable but well this one comes with these cables the other one comes with short ones so you stack these on top of each other and then um, the other cables that are in this box they're probably like 10 15 centimeters long and you you connect this and then you just jump it up to the next one so um, yeah we're gonna do a video on that unfortunately it came from germany and they only included the manual in german although there is a paper here that says what's in the box and that states that there's a u.s manual in there but well missing so down here in the basement we are also messing around with batteries uh, this pack uh, had gotten a bit out of balance it wasn't really that bad but it had gotten enough out of balance that it was causing issues so um, i've made a bit of a new setup here i have created a cable I can unplug the BMS on the battery, put in this cable, and it has a cable output for my monitor here. And it has another cable output here, which can be used with this BMS. <clears throat> this is an active BMS, and I can, for the love of God, not get this to work. It has a nice Bluetooth device, so I can, I can see everything from my phone, but it doesn't balance i can't get that up and running and the software is bulky as heck and configuring it uh, is just it's dodgy as fuck so uh, not recommending that crap i need to get another one see if i can get something better but um yeah i'm manually doing this um i'm charging up the lowest cell with my power supply up here it's not taking in much right now it's just doing the last little bit you can also see that it says the battery is well if the lens flares wasn't there battery status is good uh, there yeah 
and the difference in voltage between all the cells are like 19 millivolts. So this battery has to go into the battery bank in here. In the darkness of the basement. Oh, it's dark in here. And I'm, I'm kind of um, changing them out one at a time. There's a lot of bubbling down here. So the balancers are doing their job. Ah, the battery is cool. This one is a bit hot up here. That's not good. Mm. But the battery voltage is at 55.4 volts. Over here the lithium ion batteries are at 56.8 volts. So um, yeah, these banks are doing a bit better than the gel batteries. But I mounted, well, in the last video, I mounted all of these equalizers. These things. Oh, this one is, is that heated up because of the battery? Nope, that is cold. So um, yeah, this is, I can, it's, it's just barely warm. So it's doing something. That one is two. And that one is two. So apparently the, the battery equalizers, this one is not hot, they heat up ever so slightly. So I am to take the take this battery out and replace with the one in there. So I think I'll do that. So we'll remove power. That's number 14. So that has come up to 4.16 volts. Remove that piece of metal. I'm sticking down metals on the different battery cells um, to, to charge it a little bit. We can disconnect this cable. It's just 15 connections that I have soldered on there. Um, so there's that. And, and we need to connect this back. The problem with these BMSs is that they only balance the batteries when they are fully charged. What it does is it charges the battery up as far as it can get. And let's say this cell reaches um, maximum voltage, then it will stop charging the whole bank. And then it will discharge this a little bit, and then it will restart charging the whole bank until this gets up again. Uh, and then it will stop and then it will discharge this little bank and then yeah you get the drift so it has to be fully charged for quite a while to do any well to make much of a difference so here is the next bank in there to be tested see if how bad it's doing so we'll disconnect oh. It's a tight fit. There. That is up. Then my tiny little setup comes in play. It has a black wire that has to go in where the other black wire is. So we just pop that connection in there. There. And I power the monitor here. That's not powering the monitor. That one is for powering the monitor and it comes up and it tells me what all the voltages is and this is not doing too great but it's not doing too bad either. It's uh, 283 millivolts out so we have some low ones 3.92 so that's cell number three up here. We need to charge that up a bit and the highest one is 184 so that's number eight down here so yeah, I'll manually balance this a little bit. It will take, it'll probably take a day to get that. I go down here every two hours or so and I just move the batteries over a little bit. So let's start that up. So I kind of set my power supply here to the maximum level, like 4.184.
I can't go that precise here, but I, I try because sometimes I forget this and uh, I overcharge the batteries. Uh, I never set it too high, but if I forget it, I have to discharge them again. And that's why I have this variable resistor sitting here. I've been using that. And I've also forgotten that one and discharged it too much. So um, yeah, it's easier if I don't charge it higher than the highest because then I don't have to fix it when I mess up. This voltage is good. I have put in a tiny piece of metal here on strip number three. So this 3.92 should go up when we start charging it. And uh, we have to put minus on that side and plus on the other side. And if we do it wrong, we have to fix a lot of mess up. So let's not do it wrong there. So now we see number three is going up. And on the power supply, it's taking in, this one was pretty low, so it's taking in nine watts, which is good. So yeah, manually fixing the batteries. I really need to get another one because uh, it would be nice if this was working, but I haven't had any luck so far. In a video last week, I showed you the mounting of the of the battery equalizers on the lead acid batteries. I have actually had those equalizers sitting for a bit because I was hoping to um, to um, to improve on them because uh, on each of them there is eight connections coming out. And I wanted to put on a connector on that so that I could disconnect them really easily. So I bought the same connectors that you use on graphics cards, 8-pin connectors. If I put that on, I would actually be able to take a, uh, uh, let's say, a PC power supply or something. And I could charge up the batteries. Uh, or I could just disconnect them and I could measure the individual batteries. Or maybe have a battery monitor that I could connect to them and, uh, and just... Um, check the individual voltages of the batteries but uh, these came from China and but of course as soon as I mounted the equalizers they dropped in so that's just my luck right there probably go one at a time and disconnect them and put on a plug and then connect them again but yeah that's just my luck so that was a bit of an update on my solar playing around with um, well, I also got a sunburn, so uh, solar. But here at the very end, I will try and promote my Patreon account a little bit because at the first of the month, uh, I lose some patrons every month. So I need to promote it a little bit to uh, regain the lost. So um, please go check me out over on Patreon. But other than that, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.